Welcome to the greatest sport on the freaking planet, kayak fishing. And there's so many new anglers coming online every single day. And if you clicked on this video, you might be one of them. What I'm going to be doing is taking the over 700 videos I've done around the topic of kayak fishing and condensing them into a three part series that's going to take you from a beginning kayak angler to an amateur kayak angler. So bucket your safety belts. I'm going to move them pretty fast because a lot of these videos I've done in depth. So I'm going to be linking to them in the description below. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to pick out a kayak, gear guide basics, and kayak fishing safety measures. Part two, I'm gonna be covering common beginner mistakes, kayak bass fishing tips, and some things I wish I would have known earlier in the sport. And I'm gonna be finishing off with part three where I'm gonna be walking you through all three of my fishing kayaks when I use them and walking you through all the DIY modifications, upgrades, and accessories that I have to show you why I have them on my yak. All right, first let's talk about choosing a fishing kayak. Now, if you already have a fishing kayak, please stay tuned because this will be good information for you if you ever decide to upgrade. The number one question I get all the time through YouTube and Instagram is, hey Darren, I have a budget of $1,200 and I want to buy a fishing kayak, what do you recommend? Having a budget is a really great place to start, but I want to give you six questions to ask yourself that'll help you answer this question for you. Number one, what bodies of water are you going to be fishing the most? Are you fishing like 500 acre lakes all the time and lakes and ponds? Well, you might only need a shorter kayak that's maybe 10 feet long. Are you fishing larger lakes like 2,500 acres or larger? You might want a longer kayak. I have a bona fide P127, which means it is 12 feet, seven inches and it tracks really well. So if you're gonna be traveling long distances, you're going to want a fishing kayak that tracks really well for you. And if you're fishing big wreck lakes or salt water and you're gonna be in waves and wake, then fishing kayak stability is gonna be important to you. All right, the next question you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself is how do you want to power your fishing kayak? Uh, do you want to paddle it? They have pedal drive systems, which I have here on my Bonafide P127 and also my native Slayer Propel 10. But you can also have motors on these bad boys. Trolling motors make them go like three, four, or five miles an hour on the water. So think through how much exercise you want to get or don't want to get. Now, of course, it's more cheaper to do the paddle route. So if you're budget conscious, that may be where you need to start. But if that's not an issue for you, there's a lot of options out there for you. Old Town Kayaks recently came out with an e-PDL, which is pretty rad. So it's essentially like an e-bike on a fishing kayak where you can go full power and it'll run like a motor or you can do power assist where if you're pedaling, it will assist you to a certain degree. I think it's five different levels. A lot of different new technology coming on the market. It's just showing you that kayak fishing is growing. The sport is blowing up. I personally love the pedal drive system for a variety of different reasons, but I know I took my dad out and he hopped on the pedal drive and the first thing he said is I want a motor. So hey, to each his own. All right, question number four I have for you. Does stability matter to you? I actually have a video on what makes a fishing kayak stay and I'll throw that in the description below, but you're gonna to wanna to watch that, if, especially if you want to be able to stand with your fish or you're worried about tipping this over, you don't have great equilibrium, watch this video, it's gonna show you what makes a kayak stable so you know what to look out for when you're looking for particular kayaks because not all kayaks are created the same. Some have really great primary stability, some have really great secondary stability, some have horrible stability, and so do your research on this. I'll throw that video in the description below. Also keep in mind, some great balance assist poles out there. I just recently did a video on the steady stick that actually will fix to a propel drive. I know they make them also for the Old Town PDL drives, the pedal drives. And so I'll throw that video in the description below if you're interested in that. All right, question number five, do you need great portability? And what I mean by this, a lot of people get excited when they're buying a fishing kayak to buy a you know, 150, 165 pound fishing kayak, then they realize, oh man, how am I going to get this thing to and from the water? Because all they have is a minivan. So it's gonna be very difficult and not impossible to, it's just gonna be taxing to get that thing up and down, up and down off the top of a minivan if you have a really heavy fishing kayak. So think through, you might be putting it in the bed of your truck with a bed extender. You might be wet launching it with a trailer. Just think this through and you don't wanna end up hating kayak fishing because of loading and unloading. I actually that often so think through your portability before you buy the type of fishing kayak you're gonna buy and you're gonna save yourself a lot of hassle later on and question number six how do you plan on storing this bad boy once again people get super excited when they're buying a fishing kayak and they just think I'll figure it out later well they get home and they realize oh man the 10 foot fishing kayak 12 foot fishing kayak where am I gonna put this thing in my apartment all <laughs> right uh, so there's a lot of different options for you out there I actually created a battery powered hoist I'll throw that video in the description below if you're trying to 
to create some extra space in your garage up in the air. But if you live on the third floor story of an apartment, then a 10 foot fishing kayak might not be right for you and an inflatable one Maybe. Next, let's talk about buying fishing kayaks. Now, since you're gonna be dropping a bunch of cash likely on, on these, they can cost anywhere from 1,000 all the way up to $10,000. Just like a car, you're gonna to wanna to be able to try it before you buy it. And with some stores, you're simply not gonna be able to do this, especially for those lower end kayak ranges, $1,000, you can go to Walmart, they're not gonna let you try it before you buy it. The great thing is, you don't have to buy from them, right? One of the things I love to do, I have never bought a fishing kayak retail. I always get them off of Facebook Marketplace, and typically in the off season, so I get them for a steal because no one wants to store them for the winter and a lot of times you can get these individuals to meet you at the local dock and you can actually take them out and test drive them a little bit before you buy them so a really great option for you there and if you're thinking about buying a used fishing kayak say on facebook marketplace or some other type of marketplace then i actually created a video for you buying a used fishing kayak don't get scammed and i'll throw that link in the description below also keep in mind if there's not a try before you buy option some stores have really generous return policies know what that is and also know if it is a store credit or if you get a full refund in cash some stores i know also do demo days so check with your local kayak fishing shop and they might have a time or a couple times throughout the year where you can come out and try multiple kayaks and i know some kayaks my local fishing kayak shop falls outdoors actually lets you rent a kayak for a day so you can take a fishing kayak out and really get a feel for it fish from it for an entire day for like 50 bucks or so so that is brilliant trust me you don't want buyer's remorse after you drop one two three four five thousand dollars on a fishing kayak and the prices are going up it seems like daily and if you've yet to buy a fishing kayak and your budget conscious i got the video for you when's the best time to buy a fishing kayak and i'll throw that link in the description below and you can save some cash all right next i'm going to talk to you about the basic kayak fishing gear guide i'm going to give you three must-haves and three in my opinion what are nice to have all right number one you're obviously going to need your fishing license don't forget that but depending on your state you may need to register your fishing kayak because it is considered a vessel so do your due diligence on that and figure out if that is something you need to do and also if you happen to have a motor on your kayak they usually charge you a little bit more as well so check with your local state regulations on that and don't get yourself in trouble and if you live in Ohio they give you a giant orange sticker to throw on your kayak super awesome thanks Ohio all right the second must-have is your PFD your personal flotation device and there's a lot of different options out there you got your traditional you got your inflatable in fact I did a video called the ultimate guide to kayak fishing PFDs and I'll throw that link in the description below right, one option for you is an inflatable PFD these essentially have co2 cartridges in them and when you hit the water there's a tab that'll either dissolve and it'll auto inflate within seconds so those are pretty cool I recommend and actually wear those whenever it gets like 90 degrees plus because these traditional PFDs can get really hot especially in those 90 degree plus days a word of warning here just don't go over to Amazon and buy any inflatable budget personal flotation device because I did this and I actually got stopped by a DNR agent and they're like hey can I see your PFD I was like sure and they're like hey this isn't USCG United States Coast Guard approved you can't go out with this today now they're really cool they actually had an extra that let me go out with and I just texted it when I got back to the boat ramp but I had to go buy another one so learn a lesson an expensive lesson from me just don't go buy any inflatable PFD out there make sure it is USCG approved and of course you have the traditional personal flotation device this is the NRS Raku another fan favorite out there is the NRS Chinook the only difference between the two is where the flotation on the back is stored on the Chinook there's a high back float which I don't personally like on a pedal power kayak I like to lean back and that has a tendency to push up on my neck but with the Raku the flotation is actually spread out all along the back of your PFD which I personally like I actually did a review on the NRS Raku they are expensive but man I love all the holders that it has my phone in here I got my my NRS safety knife pliers everything is right here and I absolutely love this so if you're looking for a fantastic PFD I'll throw this link in the description below and you can check out that review as well and next let's talk about a paddle whether you have a motor a pedal drive uh, it doesn't matter you should always have a paddle with you and now here's what I do and here's kind of my recommendation if you have a pedal powered kayak or a motor driven kayak you don't need a bending branches $295 paddle right you're gonna be using it maybe 0.5% 
of the time. So I have really cheap paddles because I'm really only using it to get through maybe some lily pads or kind of push off of something if the wind pushed me into it. And so this may be like $30 on Amazon. If you're interested in this one, I'll throw that link in the description below. However, if you have a paddle powered kayak, I do recommend investing in a really nice paddle. Go for the carbon fiber. They're gonna be really lightweight, really stout. It's gonna be able to move you through the water a whole lot better. And those are gonna start probably around $90, but they can go all the way up to $250 plus. But trust me, it's gonna get really tiring if you got one of these. $30 paddles. All right, next we have the nice to haves. I'm gonna start with my kayak crate with rod holders. I actually built this one. It's one of my favorite DIY mods I do to my fishing kayaks. And if you wanna learn how to make this guy, it's awesome. It's got a lid, it's bungeed in, you make it with two milk crates. I'll throw that video of how to make that on your own because if you don't make it on your own, they can get really expensive. The black packs, the black pack pros can run $150, $180 for the box and then you got all these accessories that you can buy for it as well. So this cost me, I think maybe $25 to make. So if you wanna learn how to make that, I got the video in the show notes. It's pretty freaking awesome. Next on the nice to haves is some fish grips and landing net now for the longest time i didn't have a landing net and it will only take you losing a big bass once at the boat before you get yourself a landing net trust me um, now i love kind of reaching over the side of the boat lipping a bass and pulling it out there's just something amazing for that for me uh, but when i started getting into tournament fishing and i started losing fish at the boat i quickly invested into the yak attack leverage net and this thing's really sweet as you're landing a fish you kind of reach back to grab it, and within seconds, you're ready to go, scoop it up. You got leverage under here, and boom. Also, sometimes you catch a big catfish or a big carp, and instead of it breaking off your line, you can actually land those bad boys, take some photos of them. So the Yak Attack Leverage Net is my go-to. I don't know if there's any other net I would actually even use because it folds down nicely. It isn't sticking super high out the back of my kayak so I can get caught up whenever I'm casting. And so I will throw the link to that Yak Attack leverage net in the description below. Now, I also carry the fish grips and these are nice, especially when I'm measuring a fish on my board. Sometimes I'll, I'll put the fish grip on the lip of the bass and put it back in the water so they're not flopping around on the bottom of my kayak, potentially injuring themselves. So these are kind of nice for that and they kind of swim around here. I have it tethered on, they're not going anywhere. And when I'm ready to bring them up, maybe take a photo or put them on the catch board for my kayak bass fishing series, I'll go ahead and just kind of pull them out, lay them down, take it off, take the photo and it makes it really easy so you don't lose fish. So a little safety measure here, it's kind of nice. For third, nice to have is a fish finder. For the longest time, I didn't have a fish finder, but use the fishing kayak to your advantage. A lot of you are coming off the bank and it'd be really nice to know, and not just to mark fish. I first started out with a Garmin Striker 4 and I really didn't get it so I can like locate fish. I did it so I can know the depth of the water that was in, how fast I was moving because I was potentially sometimes trolling for fish. So my recommendation for a great entry level fish finder is the Garmin Striker 4. And to power that, I like the Nakwa Pro Battery Kit, the 10 amp hour. I'll throw some links and videos of how I put those together below. I recently upgraded to a Garmin Echomap 92 UHD ultra high definition. And so I got the install video on that. If you're interested in that, I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos in the future about how to use that, how to read that particular fishing kayak fish finder. It's definitely quite the upgrade. Now, if you love fishing kayak accessories, I got the video for you. 12 kayak fishing accessories I regret not buying sooner. And I'll throw that link in the description below. All right, now let's talk about kayak fishing safety measures. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail below, but there are some things you should know before going out on the water. So if you're scratching your head on these, do a little bit more research to really dial these in. And the first one is know how to write your yak. So, you know, flip it. If you happen to flip it over, how to flip it back over, but also know how to re-enter your fishing kayak if you're in the water and so there's a technique to this there's a bunch of different videos out there on how to do this but you're going to want to know at least how to do it and as soon as the water gets warm enough you're going to actually want to test this out for yourself so you don't panic in the moment so you actually know how to get yourself back into your fishing kayak and back to safety all right number two you're going to do actually complete weather checks a lot of times when people check the weather really only are looking for one thing oh is it going to rain and then if it's going to rain, how long it's going to rain, then is, is there going to be lightning? And then after that, they're like, oh, I'm going fishing or I'm not going fishing. They completely forget to check 
the wind, right? And wind is a critical factor when you are fishing from your kayak because it can really move you around or get you some, it's some very difficult, dicey situations if you're not paying attention. And I get it guys, I know the litmus test for me going fishing in the morning is like, I wake up, it's like, yeah, I can breathe today. Yeah, I'm going fishing. But make sure you don't get yourself in trouble. I hear a lot of stories of people who overestimate their ability, especially in their first times out on the water. So make sure that you actually do a complete weather check before heading out. And I'm gonna talk about, of course, the personal flotation device. I did a video recently called 11 kayak fishing mistakes that can take your life. And a lot of those mistakes are a combination of the mistake plus that individual not wearing their personal flotation device. And I know for some states, you just have to have it on your fishing kayak. I get the reasons. A lot of people don't want to wear them, right? They're bulky or the number one reason is people feel like they are really good swimmers. And the problem is you don't need a PFD when you can swim, you need it when you can't or when you're unconscious. So do yourself a favor, do your family and do your friends a favor, wear this thing so you can live to fish another day. All right, so two videos you should watch around safety, 11 kayak fishing mistakes that could take your life, watch that one, but also life-saving gear that should be on your fishing kayak and I'll throw links to both of those videos in the description below. So if you're watching this video and it's one week past the posting date, you will see part two of this series from beginner to amateur kayak angler in three videos, part two right here.